Welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll be delving into the comprehensive features of AOMEI Cyber Backup. Our walkthrough will cover environment setup, backup, and restore drills for both physical and virtual machines. Whether your workload is based on physical or virtual platforms, AOMEI Cyber Backup offers an all-in-one solution. Additionally, it provides seamless support for backing up data from Microsoft SQL Server. It's worth noting that, at present, AOMEI Cyber Backup exclusively supports Microsoft SQL Server databases. Stick around as we explore the ins and outs of this versatile backup solution. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and join our growing community. Hit the notification bell too so you won't miss any of our new videos. In this demonstration, we will guide you through all the functionalities of the software. First of all, let's get our download. Head to ubackup.com. At the top, you will see the VM Backup menu. Hover your mouse on it and download the free edition. Scroll down a bit and find the free trial button. Type in your email and click Download for Windows. Proceed with the installation which is very easy and straightforward. Open the main console from this icon on the desktop. Log in using the default credentials. To prepare our environment, we need to add a storage destination first. Click on the target storage from the left menu and then click on the network storage. Click the Add Target button. Type the network path where the backup will be stored and click this blue button. Now supply the username and the password to access that location. The storage target has been added. Let's take a look on the VMware Backup solution first and create a backup. We have to add a VMware server to our environment. Click the Source Device option from the left menu and then click the VMware option. Go to Add VMware Device. In the right window, supply the IP address of the server, the username and password and click Confirm. Wait a bit as the software connects with the server. OK, now if you click on the server you just added, you will see that it currently hosts two virtual machines. Let's open the web interface of the server to verify. Indeed, this server hosts two virtual machines. Now, let's go back and create our first backup. Click the Backup task. Then create a new task. Select the VMware backup type. Type the task name you want. Click on the Select plus device name. Now select the virtual machines you want to include in the backup. I will include both virtual machines. Select the target storage where you will store the backup. Define any schedule that fits your needs. This can be daily, weekly, or monthly. I will use the default schedule. When you are ready, click Start Backup. The task will start immediately. Just sit back and relax until it finishes. OK, it is done now. But does it work? Can you restore the virtual machines successfully? Let's give it a try. I will delete the virtual machines from the server. Now that the server has no virtual machines, let's continue the restore task. Back to the console again, click the backup management from the left menu and create a new restore task. Select the source. In this case, it will be a VMware server. Now select the content. Choose the location to restore it. You can also restore to a new server if needed, but I will use the original location. Click Confirm to start the restore task. Let's check our server. Job done. The virtual machines are there. Do they work? Yes, they do. I found it very easy to create a working backup for VMware. Give us a thumbs up if you found it easy too. OK, so far so good. Now let's add a Microsoft Hyper-V server to our environment. The procedure is similar to the previous one. After you log into the console, select the source device on the left and click the Hyper-V option. Now, to add a Hyper-V server, we need to provide the IP address and the host credentials. After successfully adding the server, we will get a list of the virtual machines hosted on that server. Click these three dots here and bind the device. To create a backup task, we follow the same procedure as before. Click the backup task on the left and create a new task. This time, select the Hyper-V backup type. 
Name the task whatever you wish, select the virtual machines to backup, add the target storage location and finally choose the schedule and retention you want. Now that all settings are set, click Start Backup. Wait a bit for the backup task to finish. OK, let's restore a virtual machine now and see what happens. For this we select the backup management on the left. Click on the restore records and then click on the new restore at the top of your screen. Select the task and the device name. Choose the content to restore. As before, you can choose to restore to the original location or a new server. We will use the original location again. After all settings are set, click the Start Restore button. The restore is complete, but does the virtual machine work? Let's see. I will use Remote Desktop to connect to the server. The machine I restored is turned off. Let's start it and connect. Looks fine to me. Please give a thumbs up if you found this procedure easy. Oh, don't forget to subscribe too. These two virtual environments are widely used in businesses to host their operations. It is critical to have a working backup and even more critical is to test that your backups work. Now, let's proceed with the SQL Server Backup. Having a working database backup is a crucial measure to tackle today's cyber attacks or hardware failures. Fortunately, this procedure is easy with this software. The logic is the same in this type of backup too. Simply open the console and log in. You need to add the SQL Server to the environment. So select Source Device from the left menu and click on the Microsoft SQL Server. Now add a new Microsoft SQL Server and provide the IP address and credentials. After you successfully add the server, you need to authenticate with the server. Click these three dots here to authenticate. Choose the type of authentication and provide the credentials needed. This part is needed because we have to authenticate with the SQL Server in order to perform various backup or restore operations. If you check again, you will see the current databases hosted on that server. I will use this demo database from Microsoft. Again, click the backup task from the left menu and create a new task. Select Microsoft SQL Backup Type, name of the task and choose the database you want to include. Then select the target storage location and decide what schedule and retention you will use for the backup. Numerous options here for the schedule and retention. When you are done, click the Start Backup button. Now I will use Remote Desktop again to connect to the server. Let's see if the backup works now. I will delete the database completely. Back to the console now, go to Backup Management on the left side menu and click Restore Records. Hit New Restore. In the new window, select the source, the content and the location to restore the database. Wait as long as needed to restore the database. If you go back to the remote desktop connection now and refresh the SQL Server databases, you will see that the database has been restored. But, you might want to move manually the backup file from the storage location. If you browse there, you will see that the database backup is a standard SQL backup file with .bock as file type. It can be very convenient to have this kind of backup. So, once again the software has done its job with ease. Do you agree? Give it a thumbs up if you do and hit the subscribe button too. Next, we are covering the physical environments backup. That is physical computers and servers. This job is done by installing backup agents from within the console. Let's start with a physical computer. Again using the console, go to source device on the left but this time select Windows device. Provide the necessary credentials and the IP of the device. I will add two devices for this demo. As you may have guessed, we need a backup task. So go on and create a new one. Select the system backup and set the task name. Select the device you want and configure the target location along with the schedule and retention you need. Finally, click the Start Backup button. The backup will immediately start and you can monitor its progress here. Now let's restore one of the two devices back to its original state. Go to Backup Management and create a new restore task. Select the system you want to restore and provide any necessary settings. The software will create a Windows pre-installation environment ISO first to use for the restoration process. 
Check this window here to see the restoration process in real time and see what is happening to the physical computer. Looks like the task completed successfully. Don't you think that was easy too? You know what to do. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you found it easy. Now a slightly more difficult task I want to try is to back up a hypervisor as a physical device and then restore it back to its original location. If all goes well, I should have my hypervisor up and running again with all the virtual machines working. Let's dive into the demo. Remember, for physical environments, we have to use agents. So go to Source Device, click Add Agent but this time add the hypervisor host. Then, as usual, create a new backup task. Use the system backup type now and select the device and target location. Modify any schedule or retention settings you want and click the Start Backup button. Wait a bit for the backup to complete. OK, the backup is complete. Now for the true test. Let's restore this hypervisor completely from the beginning. Click Backup Management and create a new restore task. Select the appropriate settings as in previous examples. Finally hit the Start Restore button. Watch this window for a live view of the hypervisor as it's being restored. OK, the restore has been completed. The hypervisor works fine. So, the software has gone through all our tests and it was successful. Have you ever tried this software? I was so amazed by the results and I will start using this software for my needs. It is very easy and with minimal configuration. Most of all and what really matters is that it was successful in all tasks. At this point, I want to thank you all for watching this video and if you still haven't subscribed, now is the time to do it. See you in the next video.